English is a really weird language with a complicated history that I've always found fascinating. This chart gives you a sense for how mixed up the English vocabulary is, with word origins split pretty evenly between Germanic, Latin, and French sources, and lots more coming from elsewhere. A big reason I'm into etymology is because I love learning about the histories and transformations that words went through before they ended up on my tongue. Since I talk so much etymology, I thought it might help to go through the major influences on modern English, and along the way, I'll point out some cool bug words from each different source. To help me out, I'm using this fantastic graphic showing the family tree of the Indo-European languages created by Minna Sundberg. All of these tongues have their origin in the theoretical ancestral tongue called Proto-Indo-European, which was probably spoken in the steppes of Western Asia around 8,000 years ago. Speakers of this language spread out and settled all across what is now called Europe, Iran, and the South Asian subcontinent, and Proto-Indo-European, or PIE, diverged and gave birth to a multitude of modern languages, from Persian to Hindi to Russian and, of course, English. The group of Indo-Europeans who settled in north-central Europe came to be known as the Germanic speakers. Starting around 450 CE, members of primarily two tribes living in modern Denmark and Germany, called the Angles and the Saxons, migrated to the island of Great Britain. They subjugated the local Celtic tribes and remnants of the Roman settlements, and set up kingdoms of their own. Eventually, boundaries between the two tribes became hazy, and this group of people came to be known as the Anglo-Saxons. Their language is now known as Old English, and their land was called England, from the word Angle. Sorry, Saxons. Most of the simple, everyday English words have this West Germanic heritage. This includes basic bug words like beetle, bee, ant, fly, moth, and spider. Of course, people didn't stop invading Britain just because the Anglo-Saxons had moved in. Starting around 700 CE and continuing for hundreds of years, Vikings began raiding the island. This pretty constant contact led to lots of Old Norse and North Germanic words entering the English lexicon. Lots of them have a violent implication, like skull and thrall, but we also got the word wing from the Vikings. Some sources also give Old Norse credit for the oldest version of the English word bug, which may have come from Old Norse buker, although I believe this is an inconclusive etymology. Fast forward to 1066, and England is getting invaded again, this time by the Normans. Normans were a subgroup of the Franks, yet another Germanic tribe, but the Franks had adopted a form of Latin and spoke the Romance language that led to modern French. The Normans conquered England, and Norman French became the language of royalty. However, the influence of French speakers was never enough to get common people to actually stop speaking English, and eventually those Norman aristocrats instead became assimilated into the English population. But along the way, English adopted a huge number of French words, for example, warden and beef and cricket. Since French is descended from Latin, this means that the vocabulary of English became quite mixed between words with Germanic and Romance roots. The Latin words actually came into English from several different roots. With the influence of the Christian church, which used Latin exclusively at the time, English was peppered with Latin words continuously over centuries. Highly educated members of society all learned Latin, and often borrowed words from it as well. And when the Renaissance finally came to England, a resurgence of interest in classical texts amplified this influence, in Latin as well as Greek. Latin was the language of scholarship, and the majority of technical terms came to English through Latin. Just a few buggy examples include arachnid, cicada, and termite. Of course, Latin itself was never a pure language. In fact, the Romans had their own cross-cultural fascination with the Greeks, and they incorporated many Greek words into their own lexicon. Modern English interacts with basically every other language in the world, so today's vocabulary essentially draws from everywhere, including other branches of the Indo-European tree, as well as the many other language families of the world. Food words in particular have a multitude of sources. For example, maize and potato, come from indigenous American words, while well, Amen is from a Semitic language, Bongo comes from West Africa, Tofu is ultimately Chinese, and Curry comes from the Indian branch of the family. Now and then, new bug words creep in from these other sources, like the tsetse fly, with the word tsetse, meaning fly, in a Bantu language spoken in South Africa. So this is more material than I expected, but I hope the big picture linguistic context helps. We'll focus on bugs again soon.